Yeah. I'm Oscar. And I'm Dan. And today we're in Bulgaria. Previously on Oscar and Dan. Welcome to Legoland Poland. This has to be a set. We're going to three new countries Bulgaria, Romania, and Moldova. We just asked the woman at the rental car pickup station if we would need cash driving around Bulgaria because the internet said a whole bunch of different things like, oh no, you absolutely don't need cash. Whereas some people were like, oh, you absolutely do need it. And she said it lands somewhere in between. So we got just a little bit of cash just so we don't end up in any weird situations. Picking up our rental car. This is it. Lovely color. <laughs> I don't know what Dan always has against blue cars. And we're heading out to explore our 88 country. Bulgaria. We got the car, we're ready to go. We're going to Plovdi, the second biggest city in Bulgaria. And we're gonna explore it. And then tomorrow we might go to Sofia. And we're gonna go hiking too. That's the plan for this trip. It's a beautiful day so far, but the weather forecast says there's gonna be a crazy thunderstorm this afternoon. So we're hoping we can see as much of Plovdiv as possible before we get caught in that. So we made it to Plovdiv, the outskirts of town weren't very beautiful to be honest. Just very typical Eastern European suburbs. To yeah, be honest, we were like, where have we driven? But <laughs> the in interior the core of the town looks amazing on the way down here the city looked just like the type of place you would see some british guy with a gopro walking around he was like yeah of course i read cyrillic you what you don't speak russian mate so not everyone agrees on this but some people are claiming that plodiv is the oldest continuously inhabited city in Europe. So it's pretty awesome to be here. I don't think all the buildings are preserved from the time that it was initially, you know, founded, obviously. Sometime in the sixth century BC, but still pretty cool to be here. Oh my God, it's Hummus Street, Hemus Street, close. Such a nice view, but there's a porta potty in front. Shame we can't see it too, or at least for me. The short one in this duo. <laughs> All right, so we made it to the ancient amphitheater, which is like the number one site in Plovdiv. It's from the first century built by the Romans, but it turns out it's closed today for a show. So they're setting up like a stage and everything. Not sure what the show is going to be, but maybe we should stay and watch it. I don't know, maybe it's tonight. It's yeah, I too think late. I think this is actually the first time we're at an amphitheater that they actually still use for like performances and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Most of the time they're just there as a ruin for tourists to see and you know, they don't really use them. So pretty cool. Oh wow, and the city turns modern just all of a sudden. <laughs> Is this the only mosque? Or I don't know, it's the famous well, it's one. Just looked it up and apparently 8% of Bulgarians are Muslim. But the main religion is Orthodox Christianity like in much of Eastern Europe. This is so cool. Right here is the ancient stadium that goes together with the amphitheater we just saw. So this is kind of baked into the main shopping street of the city now, which I think is a really cool way to preserve it. Wow, and this is the model of the ancient stadium. It used to be so long. So I guess the whole shopping street would be like covering this, it. This makes me think of the Hunger Games when they ride in like all the contestants on their wagon. It 
It's really fun walking around in countries where they don't necessarily have as many of the international brands on their shopping streets. Even in Sweden, until a few years ago, most of the stores were Swedish brands. And growing up, you don't really think about it, but then you realize that, wait a minute, we don't have any of the international brands that are common in other countries. Everything is homegrown, and it feels similar here, or at least intra-Eastern European brands. Come on, rainbow colored sign. It happens to be Pride Month, but I doubt that's why it's rainbow colored. We had no idea this was going on, and now we're at Sofia Pride. <laughs> It's funny thinking about how crowded it is here and Oscar and I like don't really care because obviously we won't really run into anyone we know but if this was at home like in Sweden at least I I think both of us would never go to a place like this on Saturday because the odds of meeting someone you know are so big and we all know that you don't want to bump into someone you know without intending to bump into them. This is nice when you're a traveler something we always appreciate you have like a bubble of anonymity and you're just like we don't know you, we do what we want, and we just glide through and do our thing. I also have to say that besides the buildings being very worn, if they were refurbished, this would be such a stunning shopping street. It's already very beautiful, but that would just make it like so, so amazing, even by all European standards. You know you're in Eastern Europe when there are Hesburgers everywhere. More Hesburgers than McDonald's's or Burger King's. I just looked it up though, and apparently Hesburgers from Finland. And I had no idea. I always associated it with Eastern Europe for some reason. It's pretty crazy how just all over Plovdiv there are all these ruins just like integrated into the city or I mean they built the modern city surrounding them. It's just really cool that they actually made them a part of the city. We haven't even had breakfast today but shh, no one needs to know that. <laughs> we found vegan gelato. I mean we're traveling so we're allowed to do anything right? Bulgaria and Romania are both very good places to go to when you travel a lot like us because I can't think of any Eastern European countries where we've met more people from around the world, especially in the Middle East, working from Bulgaria and Romania. So now we can be like, yeah, we've been to Plovdiv. Yeah, we've been to Sofia. Loved it. And then we bond and instant connection. Bonus points to Plovdiv for this. Water fountains. Now we're strolling through Tsar Simeon Garden, which is very beautiful and tranquil and has fountains everywhere you look. It's a very good place to have gelato. Okay, the wind is starting to uh, rustle in the leaves. So I think the storm is on its way. It's cloudy now. So we're gonna quickly see the singing fountains and then we're gonna head to a restaurant and hopefully we'll stay dry. <laughs> Fountain sing. <laughs> Beautiful, look at that. Very tempting to swim if it was still sunny. It's very nice. I don't know if they do like performances here a la Dubai, but we need to hurry and escape this storm. You know that sport speed walking <laughs> where they're like, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're not really running, but they're sort of running. Arms working from the shoulders, just driving through. Yeah, that's what we're doing right now to get to the restaurant. First of all, this is the street that our restaurant is on. We're going to a completely vegan restaurant. This street is so cute. Look at this. Oh, love it. And if you wonder how we always find all these vegan restaurants around the world, we always use the app Happy Cow, which is the biggest lifesaver for us. It's only um, quarter to two, and this is our first meal. meal. Okay, so we made it to the restaurant completely dry before the meal, but now it's drizzling a little bit and we need to get back to the <laughs> We park. forgot to mark our parking, but I recently bought an AirTag for 
our suitcases. So now I'm like, oh my God, I could go to Find My and use the app to see where our suitcase is. Oh my God, this is actually so nice. The streets are empty, the smell of hot summer pavement. I love summer rain, especially when you don't get soaked. <laughs> oh, and there's the thunder. And when you think about it, it's pretty cool. We're experiencing our first ever rain in Bulgaria. I mean, that's another new experience, right? That's pretty cool. We've never <laughs> seen or smelled Bulgarian rain before. My God, our first hurricane in Bulgaria. <laughs> my God, our first bed bug bite in Bulgaria. Oh God. I actually got my first mosquito bite in Bulgaria a few no minutes ago. <laughs> so we're trying to learn to say thank you in Bulgarian, but I'd say it's one of the most complicated thank yous of any language we've encountered so far. We keep asking people People, like how do you pronounce it and they say it and i'm like there's no way i can repeat that sound <laughs> like <laughs> <sighs> All right, the uh, one and a half, no, one hour, 45 minutes drive is over and we're in Sofia. And honestly, I am shocked coming here now. First of all, the weather is amazing. It was supposed to be stormy, but now we're in the sun. Stormy. Stormy? Rise Rise and shine. Shine. I was like blown away as we entered the city because it's so stunning, at least here in the city center. So I'm really excited to explore Sofia now as well. Hey, Sofia. Hey, how come y'all? If you know, you know. Hey, y'all, so hey, Sofia. Hey, how come y'all? Sofia, y'all come to Bulgaria. It works. It does work. Oh my God, you guys, this is so unlike us. We're never in a place when there's something happening, but today we've really hit the jackpot. Well, we're only in places when there's a national holiday and everything is closed, but yeah. when we're checking <laughs> into our hotel, we have a view of the street and the guy who brought us up to our room, he was like, oh, you'll have a view of the parade here later on. And we were like, what parade? He's what like, parade? that American thing, uh, LG. B, and we were like, Pride? Pride? So it turns out, Sophia Pride is today. The American thing. So the ironic thing is that literally yesterday when we landed, we were just reading about how LGBT rights are being chipped away at here. So the fact that this is happening right now is so important. They have security to come in. I absolutely love how unexpected this was. We had no idea this was going on. And now we're at Sofia Pride. Such an important Pride period right now too. So one of the biggest artists in Bulgaria is performing right now, Camellia. When she got on stage, people were like running, <laughs> racing to get to the stage. To Everyone was like, hold my beer. And we're like, Camellia, love it. United in support of you and your efforts. The Pride event was so cool. Obviously it was a bit difficult because we couldn't understand a single word that they were saying because everything was in Bulgarian, but still nevertheless, very cool to see it. And now we're headed for dinner to uh, a vegetarian place. Not fully vegan this time, but vegetarian. It's a beautiful evening. I think my first word to describe my first impressions of Sofia is like grand. It feels very grand, at least here in the city center where we are like huge avenues and boulevards and very like large, impressive buildings. What word would you use to describe Sofia so far? Well, old. <laughs> in, in the good way, but we've seen so little, so it's really hard to see. Yeah. So we're at this sort of self-service vegan slash vegetarian buffet. And it's so nice inside. It's a little bit all And it's all self-service. So like a self-service buffet, pretty much. By weight. I feel like they took about twice as much as standard, but I guess that's just according to my character. <laughs> It's the start of sunset and the lighting on this building across from our hotel. It's just too much. I love how he's like, this building. I would guess the main church in the city, right? Still a building. <laughs> Next time on Oscar and Dan. This looks like a full on like screensaver. It was like 20 degrees in Sofia and here it is 12. Like Super Mario World or something. Back at it again with the Asian food. Markets are always fun. Markets are always fun.